This video lesson is all on 10-3 arcs and chords. Previously in um, chapter 10, we started talking about circles and parts of a circle. So um, secant lines, tangent lines, chords, diameter radius, circumference, all those good things. And we started learning some rules about um, arcs, right? And how to find arc measures. So today we're looking at a few more rules specifically about arcs and chords. Basically, this top part here, and this these notes are, um, this file's located below the video, so you can always pull this up if I'm going too fast. But basically, in a circle, a chord um, is a line, let me focus in here. A chord is any line that stretches from one side of the circle to the next. It doesn't go outside the circle, but one end lies on the circle, and the other end of the line lies on the circle. So this is a chord, this is also a chord. If the chord lengths are the same, if these chords are congruent, then the arcs that they create are also congruent, right? So think of it like if this was a pizza. I do this to my kids all the time, they get so mad. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. Um, they, if they want to slice a pizza, I'll cut it funny because I mean, who cares, right? It's pizza, you're gonna eat all of it anyways, doesn't matter, so I'll just mess with them and might slice a piece like this and it's a really weird shape. So the piece that I slice off, I've like separated it, right? If I slice right here, the rest of this, this crust out here, this is the cord that I've created in my circle, in my circular pizza, right? Same thing over here. Once you have a, um, a cord across your circle, the part of the circle that's kind of cut off from the rest of the circle the, the actual circle itself, that's the arc that you're creating. So the rule is, if the chords are the same length, then the arcs are the same measure, right? They're the same, the chords are the same, and vice versa. If the arcs are the same measure, then we know the chords have to be the same length, same thing. So here, in this example, it shows us that this arc, CD, see the little line through it, is congruent to this arc AB. Since the arcs are congruent, we know the lines, the chords connecting those two points are also congruent. So C to D, that chord, is congruent to A to B, right? And once I know that, I can solve for X by setting 8X, which is the length of this chord, equal to 2X plus 3, which is the length of this chord. So I would just say, I hope that's not blurry. It looks blurry to me, but I can't see great. Maybe I'm zooming in too much. I would just say 8x equals 2x plus 3. And then I can solve for x, right? Subtract 2x from both sides of the equal sign. These go away. 6x equals 3. Divide both sides by 6 to get x alone x equals 3 over 6 is the same thing as 1 half. So x is equal to 1 half, right? And so I think it asked us a further question here. It said um, they're congruent, so the corresponding chords a, b, and c, d are congruent. So we're looking for the measure of a, b. Find the measure of a, b right here. So once I know what x is, because I set these two lines equal to each other, it does not say the lines are congruent, but it does say the arcs that they create are congruent. And so based on the rule we talked about, if the arcs are congruent, the chords are congruent, I know I can set these two links equal to each other. So once I know what X is, I can plug it back into AB, which is 8X. So 8X equals 8 times 1 half, because I just found out that X is 1 half, and half of 8 is 4. So the length of AB is four units, which is what they said over here. Okay, that's as hard as this lesson is. It is not any harder than that. So let's jump into some examples. There are nine examples and I'm gonna do all of them with you. All right, so here, it looks like we have a triangle here kind of, right? But I want you to think of this as, here's a chord. So if I cut pizza right here, I'm basically separating off this whole area, and here's another chord. So I'm separating off, let me get a different highlighter, this whole area. And since I know it's marked that this chord is the same length as this chord, 
I know the two arcs are the same length. So I have to find the arc measure. No, I'm sorry, the arcs, they would be the same length, but they're the same measure. So since um, this arc here is marked at X, that's what I wanna find. So how do I do that? Well, I know that an entire circle is 360 degrees, right? And I know that if the two chords here are equal, that means the two arcs are equal. So this is X, which means this is X. So I could add up all these measures and they would add up to 360, right? 64 plus this X plus this X adds up to 360. So 64 plus two X's equals 360. Minus 64 from both sides. Two X equals 296. And then divide both sides by two. X equals, that goes in one, four, eight x equals 148 degrees. So the measure of this arc is 148 degrees, the measure of this arc is 148 degrees. Because 148 plus 148 plus 64 adds up to 360. Okay, let's do another one. Here I have to find the measure of x. One thing I don't want you to forget, because my brain, the way it works, I start confusing myself. So the measure, of this arc right here is 148 degrees, right? What does that mean? What measure? What are we talking about? Remember when we have an arc, that arc is the same measure as its central angle. So just because there's not a line from here to here and here to here doesn't mean that angle doesn't exist. Basically, this whole, this whole arc right here is the same measure as this central angle right here. So even though that central angle wasn't drawn in, it's still there, it still exists. So think of it like a flashlight. You're standing here in the center of the circle, you're shining a flashlight and it shines out all over all this. So the measure of this central angle is the same measure as this entire arc right here. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right here. We have this central angle. They drew this cord right here which created this arc. Well, if we ignored this red line for a second, hold your flashlight, it shines out, right? The measure of this angle is the same as the measure of this arc, because an arc is the same as its central angle measure, okay? So what do we know here? We know this line, this cord, is the same length as this cord, which means this arc, I'm gonna mark it because I'm visual, this arc has to be the same size as this arc. It was a terrible marking with the highlighter, but there it is. So if this is 116 degrees, then this angle has to be 116. We have to find the measure of this central angle, right? Well, remember, an arc is the same measure as its central angle. So this central angle is also creating this arc. This cord kind of sections off this arc, and this central angle is part of this arc. So if this is 116, then this is 116. X equals 116 degrees. Oh my goodness, I hope you could just watch that while I just looked at my phone and realized I wasn't pointing to any of that. Couldn't see it on camera. Again, here's your central angle. This guy right here creates this big arc. If you ignore this cord for a second, this arc is the same measure as its central angle. So if this is 116, then this has to be 116 because the chords are the same. And if this arc is 116, its central angle measure has to be 116. All right, next one. Here we've got um, this chord and this chord, right? And they're both measured at four. So we know this is congruent to this, which tells me that this arc right here is congruent to this arc right here. If this arc on top is 82, then the arc on the bottom has to be 82. There's no math to show, it just is. I didn't have to subtract or divide anything. If I know these chords are the same, which it tells me they are, because it says the length of each chord is four, then I know each arc is the same. If this arc is 82, then this arc is 82. Okay, here we go. We've got um, this chord which is nine, and this chord, which is nine. So I know that these two chords are the same measure, which tells me that this arc right here is the same measure as this arc right here. 
So I have to find, because X, I'm looking for X in all of these. Here's X. It's the degree measure of this arc, right? How do I figure that out? Well, I know that this is the same as this. So this is also X. And this is X. And I know that this little piece is 90. And it's not part of our arcs, but it's part of the circle. And I know the circle has to all add up to 360, right? So I have 90, this little guy, plus this X, plus this X. So 90 plus X plus X. 90 plus 2X all has to add up to 360 because that makes up the entire circle. So minus 90 from both sides, 2X equals 270. Divide both sides by 2. X equals um, 1, 3, 5 degrees. So the measure of each arc is 135. 135 plus 135 plus 90 add up to 360. Okay, number five. We only have nine, so we're getting there. Number five, we've got um, this cord and this cord. And it doesn't say that they're equal to each other. And we know the measure of this cord right here is this length. And the measure of this cord is this length. But it does tell us that the arcs they create are congruent. The arcs are marked the same size. So we know if the arcs are the same, the cords are the same, right? So we're going to set 2x plus 4 equal to 18. And now we can solve for x. Minus 4 on both sides, 2x equals 14. Divide by 2, x equals 7. All we're doing is solving for x in each circle. Okay, this guy, we've got this cord, we've got this cord. Doesn't say they're equal. We can look at it, it looks equal, but you can't make assumptions. The arcs are not marked congruent. However, it tells us the measure of each mark and the measure of each mark is 115, so they're the same, so they are congruent. And since the arcs are congruent, then we know the chords are congruent. So we're gonna set 2x plus one equal to 5x minus five. I'll move this over. Oh, I don't have to. Um, minus 2x from both sides, one equals 3x minus five. Add five, six equals 3x. x equals 2. And if we plugged it back in to check ourselves, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 5 is 5. Both chord lengths would be 5. That makes sense. Three more. Number 7. Okay, we've got this chord length, which is 6. We've got this chord length, which is 6. So they are congruent. When the chord lengths are congruent, the arcs are congruent. I hope this is starting to, uh, you see the pattern and it's starting to seem easy. So 2x plus 4, this arc measure, is the same as 3x plus 2, this arc measure. 2x plus 4 equals 3x plus 2, minus 2x from both sides. So 4 equals x plus 2, minus 2 from both sides, and 2 equals x, or x equals 2. If we plugged it in, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is six, uh, 8. Here, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. So they would be the same with x equaling 2. Easy peasy. I know it doesn't look like that, right? This is saying that it, it would be an 8 degree arc. That would be a teeny tiny arc. But that's okay. We're not going off of what we see. We're going off of the numbers. All right, now we've got two circles, but the rule is still the same, right? If the chords are the same length, then the arc measures are the same, right? So here, uh, and it tells us up here anyways, that circle M and circle P are congruent. So we know the radius of each circle is congruent. They're the exact same size, okay? So here, um, this arc right here is congruent to this arc down here. So if those arcs are congruent, then the chords that create them are congruent. So this chord 6x has to be congruent to this chord 2x plus 24. 6x equals 2x plus 24 minus 2x from both sides. Divide by 4 on both sides. 
and x equals 6. Number 9. Again, 2. It tells us in the top that they're congruent circles. If they're not congruent circles, then the rule doesn't work. They have to be congruent circles. Once it tells us they're congruent circles, then we can still apply our arc chord rule. Okay, so it tells us that um, this arc right here is 162 degrees. Then it tells us that this arc is 198. Well, those aren't congruent, so what can I do with that information? Well, if this arc is 198, what does that make the other arc? And if this arc is 162, what does it make the other arc? Right? Remember, they have to add up to 360. So this would have to be 162 over here. And on this circle, 162 plus 198 adds up to 360. So now we've got some congruent arcs, right? Now I know that this arc right here is congruent to this arc right here. So if the arcs are congruent, then I know the chords have to be congruent. Once I know the chords are congruent, I can set them equal to each other. So 9x minus 78 equals 3x minus 3x from both sides. 6x minus 78 equals 0. Got this little logo here i going to get rid of. I'm going to add 78 to both sides. 6x equals 78. And then divide both sides by 6. x equals uh, 13 x equals 13. So don't confuse yourself. Work with the circle, not against it. Yes, we got to this problem. We see two different circles, different measurements for these lines, right? And it gave us different chord lengths. So don't just go, I don't know. Try, okay, well, why did it give me different chord lengths? What can I figure out here? I know a circle is 360. It only gave me one part of the circle. Can I figure out the other part? in both circles. Oh, and when I do look, I got two arcs the same here, two arcs the same here. Now I know the chords are the same and I can keep solving. All right, I know I kind of went fast on that, but I hope that's making sense. Um, let me know if you have questions and stay tuned for video part two.